Hi, I'm Judy Deephouse, and I'm from Rockford, Michigan, which is just a little bit north of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I started painting in, actually as a child, and left it, and then did some in college, but found that it was much too modern for me. When I had my third child, I noticed some decorative painting in a shop, and I decided, oh, I had to buy these pieces for the nursery. And my husband went to pick them up and said, they're not pieces for sale, they're samples of a painting class. And he says, after this child is born, it's back to painting for you. I was very submissive, right, right. <laughs> but I did start painting, and within probably six months, I was teaching at my kitchen table to a couple elderly aunts and a few cousins, having a good time during the baby's nap time, and went from there to teaching in my basement at a home studio, went from there to starting to teach at conventions, and it was at a chapter meeting that I met my current partner, Lynn Deptula, which you probably have seen already, and we did years of doing art shows. Uh, we did 11 to 12 art shows a year, many of them several days long. During that time, we painted, and we painted, and we painted. And in that time, you develop your own style, you develop your own look, and it was in the encouragement of the Hoot ladies, which is heart of Ohio Toll, that wanted some of the things that we had taught in pattern packet form. So we finally said, yeah, we'll think about it. And they said, you have a booth in three months. And we went, what? And in that summer, we did 15 patterns for bowls and 15 patterns for antique tin, went to our first convention, sold out, and we were amazed. I'm doing stroke work. Basically, stroke work is, even if you don't like the style of painting, we really suggest that you practice it because of, more than anything else, it's going to teach you brush control. That you're going to be very comfortable with your brushes and you can do almost anything you want with them. We're going to be starting off with medium hauser green and a zero script liner. And we're going to be loading the brush nicely and you can thin it very slightly with a little water so that you can do long script lines. And we're going to be painting the stems and the scrolls. The suggestion I always give when you're doing long lines is to never look at the tip of your brush, but always look where you want that brush to go. If you look ahead of your brush, that brush will follow your eye, and you can just do the long, thin lines. Now, if you get to a place where you feel like, I can't get the rest of that whole curl done, leave it. Go to the other end of the curl and join them together. It's, you don't have to do it all in one stroke. So you're going to complete all the stems to all the flowers and all the extra curls. This is done on a very, very inexpensive stencil notebook that you base coat the hardest cover. Some of the stencil notebooks will have hard covers front and back, and some of them will have a thin paper on the front, and then you have to base coat your back section. So once I have all these curls put in, we're going to add one more detail to the curls. We're going to get all the stems in, and we're going to come back and add just a little thickness in the top of the curls. So just in some of these areas, I'm going to come back on the line and just spread it out a little bit, just on the top of these curls, just to add a little detail. And if you get a little area, you're just going to work it out and thin it out until it all joins together. So I'm just adding a little more interest to the top curve of curls. And this one will be the bottom curve. 
All right, so that is putting the stems in. Okay, as we continue, we're going to work on the five main leaves on this design. So we're going to start with a number 12 flat, and we're just going to base coat these leaves. If you can easily put them in with two strokes, if you just press that brush down, you can smooth it out if you need to. And you can come from the tip to the curve, or you can go from the curve to the tip, whatever is most comfortable for you. There's no right or wrong on that. So we're base coating in the five main leaves with medium hauser green. Now I know there is a second line on these two leaves down at the bottom, but base coat the whole area in, and then we're going to rebase coat in the center of those leaves. So get your base coat on. And it doesn't have to be an opaque coverage. Just one nice coverage works very well. All right, we're going to be basing, making a mix of medium hauser green, a little bit of cadmium yellow, and a little touch of warm white, just to get a pale yellow green. And you can mix this with your brush, or if you have a palette knife, you can use a palette knife. And mix a, a nice little amount of it, because we're going to be using this color different times in the design. So we're just going to mix up a small, just a nice little pile of this yellow green. Okay. And this color is what we're going to base coat the inside of those other, the large leaves at the bottom. All right. All right, now that we have everything based in with medium Hauser Green, we're gonna go on to a little bit of shading and highlighting. I'm going to put out some evergreen and we'll still work with our number 12 flat. And you have already gone through the lesson of shading, of uh, floating with Lynn. So I'm picking up a little corner load of evergreen, working it out on my palette. So I got a nice little float. And I will come around the bottom curve of these three top leaves. Just to do a little shade right at the bottom curve of the leaves. So you have a side load float of evergreen. Work it on your palette a little bit. Turn your piece so it's comfortable for yourself. And just float right around the bottom curve of those leaves. All right, we're going to be highlighting the tops of those leaves with that yellow mix you made before. And there's various ways to do it so you can be comfortable. You can put it right in the tip of the leaf and just kind of feather it down. If that is most comfortable for you. Some people like to actually take a side load float, come down one side of the leaf with a little highlight, let it dry a little bit and then come down and do the other tip down and you'll highlight the top of that leaf. So you're going to be working with that yellow mix that we did, the yellow green mix, and highlighting the top of those three leaves at the top of the pattern. Okay, we're going to be over stroking that leaf and adding strokes in the middle of the leaves with that yellow green mix. So I'm going to come on one side of that leaf with my zero script liner again, press it down a little bit at the tip, and come to the tip of that brush and come right along the side of the brush of the leaf. We're going to then start right in the middle of the leaf with a little bit of pressure, lifting it up to the tip, and dragging it right out to the stem of the, our design. And I'm going to add two more little strokes 
one on either side of that center stem. So we're going to repeat that on all three leaves, where we start at the tip of the leaf with a little pressure, come up to the tip of the brush, and outline the side of the leaf. And we'll do this one. Tip of the leaf, a little bit of pressure, lifting up to the tip, and coming around the outside of the leaf. Coming back to the center of the leaf with a little bit of pressure, lifting up to the tip of the brush, and drawing its stem. Center of the leaf, a little bit of pressure, and drawing out the stem. Then we come back and add those two small little strokes, one on either side of that center vein stroke. And that will have completed those three top leaves. As you see, if the, these are all done in the, exactly the same color, but with a different background, they take on a different character entirely. All right, we are now going to work on the two bottom leaves. We have the outside frame of it that shows up as medium hauser green, and the inside is that yellow mix that we have made. Now I'm going to take my zero script liner in evergreen, our darker green, and I'm going to do a center vein, not all the way to the top, but close, and it will come right out to and connect it to the stem. We're going to start with a center vein of evergreen, and next to those center veins, you're going to do just little touches, so they look like little leaves coming off those stems, and these are done again with evergreen. Okay, now if you have a stylus, you can use a stylus for the next thing, or the end of a ballpoint pen if you have that, but you're going to put out a little bit of clean cadmium yellow, And I just tone it the cadmium yellow with just a tiny little bit of warm white, just to soften it. And it's just done with a brush mix. I'm just making just a little softer yellow. And I'm going to do a dot flower right above it. One right above the stem, one right above that, and a dot on either side. So with the end of the brush, or a stylus, or a pencil, you do a dot above the stem, a dot above that, and one on either side. And you have just a very basic little dot flower, and we're going to put a center dot in that with raspberry. It's actually with raspberry. So you're just adding a center dot in between all your pale yellow dots with Razzleberry. All right, so we have our basic stem structure done and the five main leaves. We're going to be going next to our blue flower and we will need some Indian turquoise and sapphire. A little bit of Indian turquoise and a little bit of sapphire. All right, you're going to need like a number eight flat, and what you're going to do is pick up a little bit of both colors and just do a little brush mix so you have a color halfway in between them. And you're going to base coat in those three petals of the flower with a mix of Indian turquoise and sapphire. And blues are nice. I have a little extra water in my brush, so I'm going to clean that up. You can just ease it off. Okay, so we just have the three petals base coated in with a mix of sapphire and Indian turquoise. 
I'm going to pick up some straight sapphire and I'm going to come and darken the base of these leaves, of these petals, with straight sapphire. So it's going to be very easy to blend these colors because they're made of the same color mix. So they tend to, what I say, play nice together. They like to blend into each other. So we're just darkening the base of those petals. And then we're going to be taking our fine script liner and we're going to be working with Indian turquoise. Okay. So I'm going to turn my brush, my book, upside down so I can pull these strokes toward me. And I'm going to start at the tip of these petals and I'm going to pull fine little lines of Indian turquoise to create the highlight on these petals. And you can kind of clean up their edges with these lines and make them more defined. But you, just with fine lines. Highlight the tips of the three blue petals. And I'm kind of redefining the shape, cleaning up their shape as I'm doing this too. If I want to enlarge them or just shape, straighten out their shape. While I have the book upside down, I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray at this point. Put out a little tiny bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm going to just take a little sapphire and deepen it with some Payne's Gray. So you just want to have a darker blue value. And you're going to do three little comma strokes in each petal. Again with the long script liner. And each time you're going to set your brush, lift it to the tip, and draw it out. Okay, I'm going to add a tiny little dot of straight Indian turquoise at the tip of each of these sinks. In some areas it'll show up more than at others. Depends on how far you brought your turquoise down from your, with your highlight strokes. If you want to, you could lighten them up a little bit with some warm white, but you don't need to. They're just to finish out the tips of those strokes. All right, the tendrils coming out of these flowers, and I'm, again, I'm going to turn it back to my way so I can pull the strokes toward me, are just fine lines of Indian turquoise. Just some extra fine little lines. And I have one line traced, but I always feel it's best not to trace any of these lines because you can do you can be a little freer of where you put them. And they're basically just a fine line, and when you get to the end of the line, you just stop, hold it, and it's going to create a little bit of a thickness at the end of the line to create a tip. All right. All right, to complete this little blue flower, we still have the calyx at the base of the flower, and we're going to base coat them as three small leaves of medium hauser green. So you can just literally stroke them in. So you're setting a number four flat down, bringing it up to the chisel, and just walking it out. In the middle, just set your number four flat down, and you may have to twist it a little bit. So you're just getting like three little small leaf strokes in the base of that flower. And we're going to need to let them dry to come back and shade on them. So why don't we move on to the pink flower, the large pink flower. And we're going to start with terra coral. It's kind of a pretty soft salmon pink. 
And I'm going to go back to my number 12 flat. And I'm picking up just a corner load again of that terra coral and working it out on my palette. So I have a nice side load float of terra coral. And this is going to come right at the pencil line or the tracing line of the petals, the three large petals. So you're just coming right along those tracing lines with the side load float. So the center of the flower will be kind of left clean. And again, you just start, set that brush down, flatten it, and just come right along the center of that flower, the outside line of the flower, and create the outer edges. If you get a little lines going into your center, don't worry about that because that will be all taken care of when you paint your center. You're coming around right on the tracing line. And you've created the outer color of the petals. All right, we're going to go to our number eight flat with Razzleberry. And we're going to fill in those inside sections on each petal. And you can just do it with one nice coat. And we're filling in the inner sections of each pink petal. We're going to need for those to dry before we can go on and do anything. So why don't we, at this point, go back to the calyxes on our blue flower. And we're going to shade the base of those calyxes with evergreen. So I'm picking up a little side load of evergreen, working it on my palette just a little bit. And I'm coming around the bottom curve of those calyxes, just like we did on the leaves. Now, we're not going to try and float some highlights. What I'm going to do is take my script liner, and I'm going to overstroke these petals, just to define them and kind of add to the design. So I'm coming from the outside tips of these calyx leaves, and I'm just overstroking them. The center one, I will overstroke on both sides to define it. And to complete that flower, I'm going to take some dots of that yellow mix of cadmium yellow plus white and add a few dots right coming down the stem of that flower. Three, four, it really doesn't make any difference how many, whatever works for you. The one other thing we need to complete yet on the five petals, I'm going to go back a little bit because now it's all dry down there. I'm going to go back to my number 12 flat, going into evergreen, our darker green, and I'm going to come and shade the base of those leaves that have the little flower treatment in their centers. So I'm just darkening the base of those leaves with a float of evergreen. Stroke work is used in so many types of folk art, and if that is your interest, you do want to practice your stroke work um, the other reason, it's used for a lot of trims. If you're painting plates or anything and you need to do a decorative trim, it's stroke work. If you look at the decorate at the advertisement now in magazines and on t TV, you will see a lot of scrolls and stroke work trims done on things. It's kind of a new and upcoming thing, so it's time to learn our stroke work again. We're going to do a little review of a couple techniques that were covered in the stroke work notebook. 
we are going to work on C strokes. I'm side loading a brush, working it on my palette so I get a nice side load. If you have a little edge of paint on that side, that is fine when you're doing flowers. So you're standing that brush on the chisel, you're pivoting the paint into the brush around to create a C. And that is called the C stroke. So let me do another one. You've got it loaded with paint, stand your brush on a chisel, and pivot the paint end of the brush to create a C. And that's going to make petals of that little flower. Stand, pivot the paint, and create a C. Stand, pivot the paint, and create a C. And that is called C strokes. Okay, we're going to continue on with the pink flower. I have put out a little bit of tomato red, and I'm going to take my number eight flat and get a nice side load of tomato red, and I'm going to come and shade the base of those inserts, those razzleberry inserts that we have on each petal. Again, turn your piece to where you're comfortable, and it's just done as a side load float of tomato red, using the techniques that you learned from Lynn on the fruits. And we're going to then come back and just do a little bit of highlight of terra coral on the tips of these razzleberry inserts. Doesn't take much, just a little bit of highlight to brighten up their tips. Razzleberry is not a bright pink, so it's not going to pop but it just connects it to the outer petals. Now that insert, the center of the flower, where we have little areas in there, we're going to start off with that mix of cadmium yellow and white. And we're just going to base coat in like a half moon of that soft yellow. Comes right across the bottom of all those petals. And we're going to then add out a little bit of true ochre on our palette. You don't need much. You're not going to use that much of this. Just a touch of that. And you can use, still use a dirty brush and pick up a little bit of that true ochre and put it down in the base of that center. So we're shading right down in that V of the center. And you can actually then come and pick up just a little bit of warm white on that dirty brush and come and highlight just a touch across the top curve of that center. So we're just creating a little depth in there. And we're going to then come to our script liner again. And I'm going back to Razzleberry, that deep pink color on our script. And we're going to just very thin lines do some cross hatching on that center. As you notice, I'm kind of staying with the curve of that petal that is below it, that calyx leaf. I'm following the direction of that calyx leaf to get a nice little curvature going. And we have cross, -hat cross hatched the center of our petals. If your warm white is not real, real clean, like mine is, I'm going to put out a tiny touch of warm white again. And I'm going to be adding just detail. Now this is, for some people, it's much easier to do with a stylus brush, a stylus. It doesn't make any difference. You can use the tip of your brush. I'm coming down the center of those razzleberry petals in the middle of the flower of each petal with dots of warm white. And then I'm also going to do dots of warm white on the terra coral outer sets. So when I do that, I always start at the very top and work down one way, go back to the top and work down the other way. And on the side petals, I will start at the top and work down the side. And as you work down, because you have less and less paint, often your dots will get smaller and smaller. 
And if one petal overlaps each other, you kind of stop there. So again, I'm starting in the middle of the top petal and working down each side. Go back to the middle and work down the sides. And then work down the side petals. And if you look at the brown notebook in front of me, you can see where I have enhanced it even more. Stroke work doesn't have to stop with just what the pattern says. If you're loving what you're doing and you want to add a little bit more, just have fun with it. I always tell students to trust their brain because as soon as your head starts to say, oh, I wonder if I have enough strokes here, that's the time to stop. We can put dots right on that center if we want to. All right, the only thing left to do again on that flower are the calyx. So we're going to start again with medium hauser green, and we're going to base coat those two calyx in. You can come from the points in, or you can come from the curved side out, however it's comfortable for you. Just because you saw someone do it one way, do not think that that's the only way you can do it, and if you can't do it that way, you can't do it. You do it what's comfortable for you to paint with. You're learning to paint, and you have to be comfortable with it. And you have to have some fun with it, too. I'm picking up a little side load of evergreen, and I'm going to shade the base of that calyx, darkening their base. And I'm going to go to my script liner again and pick up that yellow-green mix and overstroke those calyx, just like we did on the blue flower. And I'm going to finish it off with some cadmium yellow dots right at the base of the flower and coming down the stem. Okay, we have one more flower to complete on this little design, and then we're going to need to put out a little bit of dioxin purple. It's a nice, strong, bright purple. And I'm going to take a little bit of it, and I'm going to mix a little warm white into it so I can just get a softer purple. We need some of the strong, but then we also need some of the, the lighter. And you're going to take like a number four flat. You're going to pick up just a side load of that number four flat. And if you have a little texture on the side of that brush, it's perfectly fine. And you're going to come around these small and just paint them like a little letter C. And each petal is just a small little C. You're just curving your brush to paint a C in these. They're called C strokes. I wonder why. And you can come and do them again if you didn't get enough coverage, but you're just coming around the outer petals with a C stroke of a mix of dioxin purple and warm white, just to make a medium purple. Now I'm just going to wipe that brush off and just pick up some of that straight dioxin purple. And I'm going to come and do another little layer of petals right inside. Again, C strokes. Maybe this time I'll only fit five petals. Maybe I'll only fit four petals. Whatever comes around to complete your design. There's no right or wrong that you have to have exactly this many petals. So we're just creating a little flower up at the top with straight dioxin purple at this time. And you can come back and touch them in. And I'm just going to put a little bit of dots in their centers, some with cadmium yellow. I'm going to pick up then a little bit of that true ochre to make a few of them a little darker. And I'll pick up a little bit of warm white to add a few light ones. And that's the center of my flower. 
Now above that flower you see three small leaves. And this is where we're doing the double load. I am going to take my number four flat, put one side into evergreen, I'm going to put the other side into that yellow-green mix, and I'm going to blend them a little bit on my palette. So there's just a gradual change of color, and the stroke of these are you set your brush down, you rise up to that chisel edge, and you just slide it off. So evergreen on one side, the yellow mix on the other, a little bit of a blend. Set your brush down, lift it up to the chisel, and slide off. Setting the brush down, lifting to the chisel, and sliding off. And I'm going to paint right on top of what I did, so you can watch that brush and you can notice it doesn't curve. I'm just, I keep the brush at the same angle. So I'm setting the brush down. I'm lifting it up to the chisel and I'm just letting it slide, but I haven't changed the direction of the brush or the angle of the brush. Going back to my fine liner, I'm going to put a little stroke of evergreen right in their centers just for a little stem. And if you want to, you can come back and define one side with a little line of evergreen. All right, left in this design are strokes, just basic comma strokes that we are going to do with medium Hauser green. And you're going to need like a number three round. And you're going to load it with that medium Hauser green again. And these are all the basic strokes. If you look at my design, and this is where you're going to see where strokes are. You say, well, why does she have it drawn like a T? And what that T is telling you is how much pressure you should be applying at the tip of it. So how big the top of that stroke should be. So I'm going to start right down here at this base. And you can see that T. And I'm going to set that brush down with pressure. So I know that I have covered up that T lines, and then I'm going to bring it up to the tip of that brush to draw the tail. Sometimes you need to thin your paint just a little. My medium hauser has been out here just a little bit. I always say sometimes it's almost best to do stroke work with fresh paint. So set your brush down, cover that T, and bring it up to the tip of the brush to create the stroke. Pressure up to the tip and create the tail. Allowing pressure up to the tip of the brush and create the tail of the stroke. So we're going to be completing this little design here with strokes of medium Hauser green. Again, if you would look at the brown notebook, you can see where I incorporated color strokes using the colors that we have used in the flowers to create a series of strokes. And I would go for the largest stroke would be the darkest of the color, and it would flow down to lighter and smaller as they go along. This is another way of changing your design to fit your needs and to fit your decor. Designs are there to help you and suggest, you, suggest to you what you would like to paint, but they do not have to be followed exactly. Please have the freedom to do what you want, to make it your design, to make it fit in with the decor of your house, or if you're going to give it as a gift, in the colors that you know your friend would enjoy. So you do not have to stay exactly in the instructions that are given. We like to see our students use a little, say, oh, but I wish it had more blue in it, so I want more blue, or I don't have any blue in my house. This is not going to work for me. I need to change it to that. That is really good. 
So we have completed the basic stroke work design. I have on the bottom of here just a little the word notes. As you can see on the brown one and on the cream one up here, you could do a monogram for whoever you're giving it to or if you want it for yourself, you could do something, you know, whatever works. But the notes, we're going to just complete this with notes. And I'm going to start off with that pale yellow mix, which is cadmium yellow and warm white. And you're just going to, like you did the original stems, just paint in the lines. And you don't have to try and go all the way in one stroke. Paint part of it and then come from the other end and complete it. But do you complete your wording with pale yellow, which is a mix of cadmium yellow and a touch of warm white. Now I am seeing my pencil line through here. Sometimes on the more sheer colors, we would advise that you erase some of your pencil lines just so you can see them, or your graphite lines. You don't want to... What I may have to do is give this a second coat. But there's another way of covering that up. And that is using a little bit of shade on it. So I'll take the same liner brush. I'm going to turn my book upside down. And coming from the bottom, I'm going to come right on those yellow lines with some of that true ochre just to set the bottom of those letters with shading. That makes the top stand out even more. And it, the true ochre is a much more opaque cover and will cover up those pencil lines even more. If it gets too carried away, you can always set it back down with some yellow again. We're just shading the bottom of the letters, coming right on top of our yellow lines with lines of true ochre. And we have that done. I put a little bit of a border on the book because I felt at this point it was pretty, but it kind of fell away. So I took a half inch brush, a number 12 would work, and I used a little bit of raspberry, tomato spice, and a little terra coral. I just mixed my three reds that I had, didn't particularly care about how much, and I just came across the top of that book with the width of the brush. Now you're going to have to come back and kind of tuck that color in between all those coils, but that's not that hard. Just get your stroke on first, the width of the brush. If you want it narrower, you just use a little narrower brush. There's no right or wrong. may take you two coats, but I think that looks all right. And I'll come back and just touch in between those coils just to paint the rest of that area. And it just takes a little bit. If you don't like it on the coils, you're going to have to let it dry, and then you can just take your finger and it will just kind of scrape right off the coils. All right, to complete the book, we're just going to do a couple little stroke things. I'm making a mix of, again, that mix of sapphire and Indian turquoise, that mid-blue, halfway, it's what we started with on our blue flowers. And I'm going to do what we in the folk art world call a lifeline. It's just a little line that goes up and down, and I'm just doing it to kind of clean up the bottom edge of that red band. 
you're doing it with your script liner, and they call it a lifeline because they say it imitates life. We have ups, we have downs. Life is not a steady, straight line. It is, we have valleys, we have high points, we have happy times, and we have sad times. And that's what makes life interesting. I'm going to complete this on here. I'm going to just do stroke work. And I'm going to do it in that pale yellow mix of cadmium yellow plus warm white. And I'm just using my number three round. And I'm just going to do a couple, just a stroke. Just create a little pattern. You can do whatever you want up there. You could do a series of dots. You could cross hatch it up there with another color. Whatever is comfortable for you. Now that stroke is not good, so I'm going to take a little clean brush and I'm just going to clean up some of that paint. We're going to have somebody else, one of our favorite little students, come in and show you how she likes to clean up strokes. It's just a little tip she has. We'll be adding that to the video too. Just little touches of what any student can do to make them more comfortable. But we're just finishing up this little notebook to have just strokes, and you can come back then and add dots or dashes of another color. Showing up here probably will be best would be warm white, and I can just come and add a couple little dashes between my strokes with warm white to create another pattern. If you look at all the books, they each have a little bit of a different pattern on their trim at the top. So we're just completing this with dashes of warm white. And that is our completed design, our little notebook. Now, we don't want you to think that's all you could paint it on. So I had taken some of the original shapes and moved them around a little bit. And I put them on a very basic little mirror that you, and used slightly different colors. And so you could take parts and pieces of the design you could, it could go wonderfully on a little hand mirror. It could go on the top of a little box. At many other craft stores, you'll find little paper mache boxes that you could base coat, and you could do the just pieces and parts of the stroke work. Well, obviously, that I paint with deco art paint because it's the highest quality paint that I can get my hands on. The value is there. The price is good. I mean, it's reasonable. It's available. It is uh, excellent quality. It, the coverage is superb. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. The colors are consistent. I mean, there's that whole quality control thing. I can always trust the quality and trust the colors to be what they say they're going to be. Most decorative painting teachers, studios, shops, are teeny tiny cottage industries. And that little bit of money saving event helps tremendously for us to grow our businesses or to teach our classes. It makes a huge difference. Why I'm very comfortable with it is I know I can trust the quality. I know I can make it do a variety of techniques from washes to looking like watercolors to very constructed folk art. You know what? You need to use Deco Art Paint and be happy because it is the most supportive company I know, basically, of the entire painting industry. I mean, they never, ever back down. They never step off. They always say, you bet, we'll do it, and step up to the plate. Because okay. if, if you say it and then I look at you like this, this is what you're going to see in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably the... Uh, the best part of decorative painting for me is the people that I've met through Absolutely. the years. Mm -hmm. We've made bonding friendships from the very first class I ever taught to, I still have some of those friends today. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been through thick, thin, 
uh, classroom situation, I think, is fabulous. You support each other, you stand by each other, and it's just been a really good experience for them to do it. And they can. I mean, anybody can do it. You it's, break it down step it's by like, step, and they can do if it. If you want to do it bad enough, you can do it. You can. You, it's not going to just fall out of your brush overnight, but it's truly doable, and with practice, you can do it. Anybody can do it. It's well, so when I first so started wonderful. painting, and I feel guilty because I was a stay-at-home mom. I go to a chapter meeting on Saturday. We might paint a leaf or two, maybe get part of a flower done. I come home and say, "Right, I can't believe I only got this much. Oh, look, I only got that." He said, "Didn't you enjoy yourself?" Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. And then don't feel guilty. This is your time. This yeah, is for you. Yeah, yeah, this right. is your mental health. Yeah, right. Just to be able to do this. Right. And if you belong to a local painting chapter then you meet people from other chapters that you can interact with and you can say, you know, what do you guys do for fundraisers? What do you do for who are, you know, who are your favorite mm -hmm. teachers? Um, what kind of, you know, what kind of luck do you have with seminars? Who teaches your seminars? What, what do you do for your Christmas party? Cause that's a big thing, the Christmas party. Mm -hmm. And it, you always learn something from somebody that gives you some fabulous idea that you can take back to your chapter across the country. You don't have to live in a big city. You don't have to have every craft store in America that you can have local retail stores, not the big fancy craft stores, and still find the products uh, with America, the basic, Walmart, with, yeah, any of the, the um, office supply type stores, mm -hmm. those kind of stuff. Sort of, we've looked at, we worked really hard to make sure that it was available to Everybody in every single market, not just in a, the people that live in cities. Mm -hmm. But, and then you can fine tune it. And as you do need more supplies and stuff, you can, there are online, go, you can go to decoart.com and uh, other, there are other painting resources out there, but also you can go to your local craft well, stores. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you joined us and I hope that you paint many round flowers on everything that doesn't move. If you Absolutely. need help with anything, please email me. My email is included in your pattern. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And thank you for joining me in painting coasters and the little fruit designs. You can paint them on anything. Um, aprons, curtains, anything your little heart desires. And if you have any questions, of course, you can just call Judy. <laughs> <laughs> email me and I will be more than happy to help you. Right, Judy? Right. <laughs> Being business partners, we do abuse each other. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> I'm hoping you enjoyed your experience with the three lessons. I hope you have gotten encouraged to uh, take up this new art, not a new art form, this very old art form, but have fun with it. And thanks. I hope you will try stroke work. It is fun. Mm -hmm. It is. It's relaxing. It's fun. And I basically just want to say thank you for trying decorative painting. It's Deco Art has been um, very supportive in putting together a basic project with um, the basic techniques of decorative painting. It is something that anybody can do and enjoy. And um, they worked really hard to support decorative painting. And we were very, very honored and pleased to be part of this and to hope that we can share what we have come to love so completely with other people so that they can also appreciate and, and enjoy and share the everything that it brings, not just the painting, but the painting and the fun and the friendship. Thank you, Deco Art. Woo